we have worked um, with Life Science Centre now for about three years and really that partnership started as an opportunity to look at accessibility and how the Life Centre can introduce the autistic community to the centre. Our overall goal when we reached out to North East Autism Society was to bring together a group of young people who would influence the environments and exhibits over two new exhibitions which were the Space Zone and the making studios. The partnership matters because we know that autistic people can often be socially isolated, they can often lack some opportunities and access to community venues, so this partnership is really key. Many autistic people don't feel like they're listened to, they don't feel like they're getting their voice heard and I think what this partnership has done really well is actually listen to the true voices of those young people and done something with that, so we've actually turned that into action which is, is really important. Some people may get nervous or worried if they don't have any idea of what is going to happen. So they could be provided with a descriptional plan to show them what would be happening or could be happening when they're there. Some of the biggest achievements that Life Science Centre have been to improve the accessibility for the autistic community. So things like developing a sensory map and a sensory bag um, a visual story. It's been great to view that and also to get critical friends from the autistic community to further help us to enhance that and take that, that further forward. All the sensory aspects are great with the map and the sensory bags are great just to keep them distracted when he, when Joshua Joshua's quite loud and can race off at any time. So if you just find like a sensory toy that'll sit them down and be quiet for five minutes, that, that's great. You've got a group of young people here who maybe didn't have friends before, perhaps they've never met another autistic person before, and what we've done is we've brought them together, so we've seen developments in self-confidence, self-esteem. As we go into the centre, he's enjoyed being part of something and being more of a group. The opportunity just to um, say what they feel and say what they experience and have that verified and, and acknowledged is really, really powerful. It felt pretty great. They actually made improvements upon what I'd suggested and what the other people had suggested. So one, for example, would be I'd suggested they should change the chairs because they would make these very high-pitched noises that hurt my ears a lot. They actually changed the flooring so that the squeaking is no longer as much of a problem. I think what we've seen is young people, a group of young people initially that came into the centre were a little bit shy, a little bit nervous and actually over time they've built up trust and they've really flourished, you know, they've, they've really developed the confidence. He's came out of his shell a bit more. He's been more inclined to answer questions because he's quite reluctant to do so. He's wanted to write things down. Whereas before he wouldn't necessarily do that because um, he gets frustrated with his writing and how he spells things and what his writing looks like. One of the unexpected outcomes we've had from this journey is that uh, Nia has applied for money through Children in Need to develop an E equals MC squared science club. That was something we hadn't anticipated doing at the start of the process, but when the young people were seen to be doing activities in the junior science lab, it, it is foot to fuse. Funds were applied for and subsequently got, and that science club is, is now in the third cohort of which it will run for another two, another two years. In addition, we've also developed Sensory Friendly Sunday, which is something that we didn't set out to, to achieve. That's something that we're really proud of. Some of our young people have appeared on some of the conferences that we've spoke at and some of our promotional material, and that for them has been a massive challenge, but a huge achievement all at the same time. Confidence is a massive, huge thing. Um, before, she was sitting on my knee when she first started, and now, look, she's doing interviews. Do you think other autistic children should come to the set for life? Definitely, yeah. She's happy. I think she's got ownership of it. It's part of who she is now, and it's like yeah. something she can talk about because she didn't have any projects or any kind of extracurricular activities that would suit sort of her for her special needs. Now, it's like, oh, I've got this thing, and it's something she can feel part of. It gives us confidence. Yeah. We've realised as we've gone through this whole process is it's more powerful for the community to come together and, and, and life can be the venue. Bear in mind that some of these people and, and the parents didn't know each other before this, this event and they're now good friends. We've all came together, all with different children with different autistic needs. When she's around children who present the same as her, she's, she's more confident, she becomes herself, and she's a different person from when she started. Absolutely. She's just thriving. She's absolutely doing amazing.
I think for other organisations that want to follow in the footsteps of the Life Centre, it's really important to have honest, transparent communication with the partner that you may be working with. Work with a community partner to build up confidence with that community partner and to listen to what the community's got to tell you. So it's not just a case of listening, it's actually actions on the back of that that made a difference. This is about people and their lives and that's really what matters. It's been a real journey of learning um, and one I don't really think I've reached the end of. I'm quite happy to, to listen and learn 